Hi, I'm Ben, and welcome to my June 2020 video game room tour. Uh, for those of you who know me, um, I have been collecting video games for a long time. I did a video like this in, I want to say, 2019, maybe early 2019. And uh, since then, you know, uh, I, I spent a lot of time collecting, going out uh, to yard sales, flea markets, online, Facebook, OfferUp, uh, basically any place I can find it. And I collect games, and basic. And at this point, uh, the collection's gotten pretty big. It's getting actually a lot harder to find things that I actually need. So um, the increases are getting a little bit more incremental. So anyway, uh, recently a number of people that I know, uh, coworkers, friends, even some people I've traded with locally, have been asking uh, for an update on the game room. And so I figured uh, it's been a while. Why don't we walk through the room? Uh, I actually uh, expanded a little bit, reorganized things, um, since uh, right now, obviously, uh, I'm at home a lot more, uh, given current events, and I figured, why don't we go through this, uh, show off what I've got, and maybe later, uh, if you guys have any questions or need any advice or have ideas for f uh, future videos regarding uh, retro game collecting, uh, maybe we can uh, I can help you out on that. So anyway, I'm going to flip the selfie stick around, and we can begin. So, um, the whole room, just backing up a second, this is not a huge, huge room. This is the second bedroom in my house. Um, I don't live in a huge home. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, this is an old townhouse, you know, probably about, I guess, probably about 70 years old now. And the second bedroom is probably, I don't know the exact dimensions, it's probably something like uh, maybe 10 by 10, I'm guessing. So, not a ton of room. Uh, certainly enough for a normal person <laughs> to have video games in, um, but maybe, uh, you know, it's sort of getting to the point with me where you can already see that things are a little cramped. So it actually expanded into two rooms. Now, where we'll start is, uh, I'll just show you a little bit about my general setup for playing games. Uh, I actually need to redo this. I my This entertainment center is kind of falling apart, and it doesn't really suit a lot of the things I have now, but as you can see, we've got like right here, this is a Neo Geo consoleized uh, two-slot MVS system, so uh, a arcade board for a Neo Geo converted into something for consoles. Uh, and a lot of my things are hooked up for, um, like this goes to component video for a nice clean image on a HD TV. And I have, you, I'm not going to show it, but there's a little component switch right where that subwoofer is uh, for me to switch off all my component stuff, which there's a number of things that support. Uh, we've got a uh, I guess it's an SNES Junior right here, which I had uh, RGB modified. Uh, I did that because uh, I run a lot of my old stuff through upscalers. Right here, this is a, um, a Frame Meister. This is a, a, a older uh, scaling unit. I also have something called an Open Source Scan Converter, or OSSC, which I like to use a little more because the lag, and that's downstairs right now. Maybe I'll show that in a future video. Um, but anyway, if I wanted to run something through RGB, or uh, get a really a nice clean signal on HDTV. These types of units, I think, are really important for uh, old school gaming. Uh, down here, uh, it's sort of hard to see. Uh, we've got a PC Engine Duo RX. That's also modified to go RGB. It has an LED light in it and such. That's for uh, all my Turbo Graphics stuff, both um, Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games, which is the Japanese version, as well as Turbo and PC Engine CD games. Uh, down here, there's a Retron, uh, which I really never use these days, but I have it, and a PS2 Slim. Really a great console, the PS2 Slim with the backwards compatibility and the RGB out. So I like those. I have a number of PS2 Slims. I find a lot of them when I'm out game hunting. Uh, down here, uh, sort of also, again, hard to see. We've got a, a, a black Wii console, nothing special about that, really. A original Xbox, a very underrated system, I think. Uh, and then down here, a... Uh, uh, NES top loader, as well as a Sega Saturn, which the drive is open. So let's fix that. <laughs> um, on this side here, uh, I picked up this CRT. Uh, this is a what's called a PVM, uh, pro, uh, professional video monitor. I got this locally. Uh, it was really a great, great deal. Um, and um, if you've never played with one of these monitors before and output you know, RGB to one of these uh, CRT monitors, it's a real treat. Uh, really the best experience for lag, uh, you know, little lag and stuff like that. And you really get some of those old school effects that some of these games were meant for. Uh, one neat thing here, 
This is another top loading NES. I found this thing locally, like right around the neighborhood for like 10 bucks, and it was in terrible shape when I got it. Uh, it was covered in grime. There was like uh, uh, duct tape all over it. Uh, the screws were missing. And a great local shop, Regen, uh, really did me a solid and helped me get it cleaned up, remove all the gook. Uh, and then on the back, I got some AV outputs. So this is normally an RF only system, but this one outputs via uh, composite, which is really nice, and I have an EverDrive hooked up to it, so I can play games. You know, one thing I'll say is that uh, if you just want to play games, things like the um, things like the EverDrives are really useful, and I'd really encourage them. Uh, also hooked up to the CRT right now, I've got an N64, and actually a Sega Genesis and a Model One Sega CD. That was a really cool pickup. Uh, my buddy Matt found it at a local store for thirty bucks. The guy didn't know if it was working. I said I would take the chance on it anyway, and then another shop around here helped me get it fixed. So I ended up putting in a new laser, and I had to, get, I think, get a band so the CD tray would eject. Um, but it got all fixed up, and now it works, and that thing is really cool. I was really happy to pick that up. Uh, there's a few other things down here, odds and ends, nothing really special, so we don't have to dwell on that. Up here... Um, you can see I've got a lot of the Amiibos that I actually didn't take out of the box. Um, some Amiibos I open, some I don't. Um, usually when I, if I open them, it means that I have something I want to do with them. Otherwise, I just leave them in the box. You know, I'm not a big, you know, keep it sealed kind of guy. One of the reasons I collect video games is because, uh, it's the one thing you can collect that you can actually play with. And, um, uh, and, you know, I pick up Amiibos because I like them, not for any of the collecting. You know, that's another big thing is... I honestly think that it's probably best if you're game collecting. You know, it's okay to be cheap about it, but um, if you're doing it for the money, I, I would ask, like, why are you doing it? You know, um, yeah, to me, this is about nostalgia and fun. So anyway, um, there's uh, a bunch of Amiibos here, and behind it, you can't really see it all that well. There's a Killer Instinct Super Nintendo I found locally. That was a really crazy deal. Like, I had a bunch of Super Nintendo games in a box, Killer Instinct. And then also this puppy, which is a sealed SNES control original. Um, and then I paid a, like a hundred bucks for all of it. It was a really, really good deal. And then behind all these Amiibos, not as special, and I really shouldn't put it here, is a Model 2 Genesis in box. That was another local deal that I paid really practically nothing for. Um, but I like it. So um, here we've got PS2. You can see I, I, I tend to scatter with the Amiibos. I, I tend to use them as like shelf fillers and things like that. So you can see like... I got the Dark Souls and the Cloud Amiibos right here. I could probably do a better job organizing them. Uh, I have a ton of PS2 stuff, and I'd really recommend uh, right now, if you're getting into collecting, uh, PS2 is a great system to collect for, and I honestly think it's probably on the rise um, as um, as sort of that nostalgia thing kicks in. You know, a lot of the people who grew up, you know, maybe were six, seven years old when the PS2 came out, might be getting in their mid-20s now. Um, other cool stuff here. This is a trance vibrator for Res. Uh, people laugh at this. This is a thing that does vibrations for the original Res game on PS2. I found that at a store in Delaware, um, if you could believe that. Um, more PS2 stuff. I have a lot of, uh, you know, my PS2 games really run the gamut in terms of, uh, it, you know, rare uh, versus cheap. And, like, for example, you know, I've got some super expensive things like Haunting Ground. You know, this is, I'm not going to pull it out entirely, but this is an exceptionally uh, expensive game. But then again, I also have games that are super cheap, like Gun, which is practically, practically nothing. Um, more PS2 stuff. As you can see, this shelf's kind of filling up. This shelf used to be uh, a lot more than PS2, but I kind of ran out of space, and I got so much PS2 stuff recently that I felt like I had to expand. So I pulled all the other things off. Another thing I found, this was a last summer find. I found a slim silver PS2 in the box. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. Another really great deal. I, I don't usually go for too many complete in box things just because the price is more than I'm usually willing to pay. But, you know, you can put these st things together and still find some great stuff. You know, I have a lot of great complete in box things that I didn't pay all that much for. We got some odds and ends down here, some spare Nintendo powers. There's more to come with that. Uh, manuals, cables, probably should be cleaned up. Uh, up here... Um, uh, Persona 4 Dancing All Night Collector's Edition uh, probably belongs in the handheld room, which I'll show you later. Uh, more Amiibos. I really do like this. Um, I forget wh who made it. It's like a little uh, Mario 1 steps thing where you can put the Amiibos on. I think that's a really neat thing. 
Uh, over here, NES and SNES games with these little aftermarket cases. I'll show you real quick. Uh, the aftermarket cases, I don't want to screw this up, so I'll pull one over here. Here's Bucky O'Hare. This is kind of an expensive loose cart game. Um, as you might imagine, I don't have this complete in box. It's very expensive, uh, complete in box. But these little aftermarket cases, there was a guy in D.C. who sold me uh, a ton of them. Uh, he was getting out of the collection, and so I took them all off his hands. And you can see that a lot of my games on NES and SNES and a few N64 are in these kind of like clamshell cases, which are pretty nice for, for display, if, especially like if you don't have, if you don't want to spend the money on the original box. Um, right over here, I'll show off real quick, a lot of people like this stuff, is we've got some Turbo Graphics games and Turbo CD games, along with uh, Japanese Turbo Graphics and Turbo CD, you know, PC Engine stuff. Uh, a few highlights. You know, uh, this is one of my all-time favorite games. This is Castlevania Dracula X for the PC Engine CD. It's in perfect shape. Uh, I paid, I think I paid like 100 bucks for it, which um, is a lot of money, but a really good deal, especially at the time. We got some loose Hue cards over here. Um, but yeah, uh, that stuff's really cool. And I love Turbo Graphics. I, I really only got into it uh, a couple years ago. And... Um, Right now, I've been playing a lot more of these shoot 'em ups and things. Uh, I just find it such a satisfying system. Another thing I've been doing a little more recently is taking some of my loose NES games. You know, my NES collection is it's not complete, but it's getting to the point where um, a lot of the things I'm looking for are pretty expensive. And rather than pine for some of the most expensive games, I'm going back and saying, well, why don't I see if I can find the box for Abadox and make that a complete game? Or, you know, I found Lolo 3 and I completed that and stuff. And I'll, I'll get the th things I want over time, but, you know, more fun to complete your loose copy of Contra and get a box for that. So, some cool stuff here. Uh, I don't have... I, I don't really think any of the complete and box NES games are really all that expensive. I mean, I guess maybe some of them are probably up there. Um... You can see I've got some uh, some complete in box Game Boy and Game Boy Advance stuff. Really not all that much, uh, to be honest. Uh, and this is something I'd like to add on to because I really love the Game Boy. And I'd love to get more boxes for it, you know, loose boxes. I have a ton of games, which I'll show you uh, soon. Uh, more NES games, complete in box. Uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, more NES stuff. I love, I love this. I picked this up at a flea market. This is uh, We're in Time as Carmen Sandiego. And it has the atlas and stuff with it. Uh, I kind of have it. It's not expensive or anything. But I just kind of have a soft spot for it. I think it's a neat, a neat thing. Um, over here, uh, we've got um, just some spare items, uh, some Repro Genesis games and aftermarket cases. These are these are real. These are my um, complete in box uh, Master System games. Um, I got really lucky on them. Like. Um, this copy of Fantasy Star right here. This is a pretty expensive game. I paid five dollars for it. A lady told me she was a landlord at a uh, for an apartment complex, and she the tenants left and they didn't pay the rent, and so she took the stuff in the place these games and she was selling them for five bucks each. And I said, okay, I'll take it. So that was uh, pretty cool. I also have some. Uh, these are SNES boxes. I don't have the games for these yet, so uh, the boxes are just sitting here. I got a really good deal recently uh, just on a bunch of empty boxes, you know, SNES boxes. And, um, you know, one of my rules is is that um, if you don't uh, have, uh, it, you know, if you get a good deal and you have double, and there's doubles in it, or maybe you want something complete, but this is loose, but the deal's really good, you know, I usually say go for it. And, um, you know, you can't, be picky when you get a good deal. You just have to take what's given to you, and that's one of the ways you make a big collection because uh, sometimes uh, these things come together over time. Uh, and so being patient really gives you great returns uh, just waiting on those good deals. Uh, here's some loose Genesis games. Uh, these aren't all my loose Genesis games, but it's a good portion of them. I put the ones that are, I guess, maybe a little more special to me that are loose up here. This is actually a cassette holder that I found at a Goodwill. It was actually a really great thing to hold at uh, Genesis games, kind of perfect. Um, any highlights here? Um, I've got, um, uh, you know, we've got Castlevania Bloodlines. That's a really cool game. Uh, oh, uh, Splatterhouse is probably here, right? Yeah, Splatterhouse 3 is right here. 
I paid 10 bucks for this. There's a local guy who, uh, he actually called me. I found some games um, at one of his uh, sort of flea market things that he set up. And um, I bought a bunch of things and we got to talking. I explained, you know, I'm looking for deals. I I'm pretty upfront with people when I come out and buy this stuff. I uh, tell them, you know, I collect stuff, but I'm looking for a deal. You know, I'm not coming to a yard sale to pay eBay prices. And if they don't like that, you know, uh, too bad, but that's kind of the way I go. And he understood. He cleared out storage units and stuff. Here's Streets of Rage 3. That's pretty cool. Um, anyway, he was uh, he was clearing out the stuff, and I said, listen, uh, I can't give you eBay money, but I can give you a good, honest deal and cash on the spot. And so he called me and sold me that and something else. I forget what it was, uh, as well as some other things. He was a really cool dude. Um, down here uh, on these shelves, these are my complete in-box Genesis games. You might notice uh, that I have a lot more uh, complete and box Genesis games than some of my other systems. Uh, I got really lucky a couple years ago. Uh, one guy just sold me a ton of Genesis games and they were all complete. And then right after that, I went to this place, Second and Charles in Delaware, and they were selling, or maybe it was Hagerstown, I don't remember. They were selling complete and box games for like loose prices. And that's how I got Rice Star. That's how I got Shining Force 2 complete and box, uh, things like that. Other good stuff here at Splatterhouse 2. Uh, somebody uh, local to me uh, sold me this. Uh, I paid a lot for it. I'm not going to say how much because uh, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. But um, uh, he gave me a good deal, and I really appreciate that. Uh, one of my other rules about collecting is, um, you know, be nice to people always and be honest with people always. Uh, be a good dude or, or, or lady. <laughs> Uh, because uh, when you're nice to people and you, you're right by them and you're honest and friendly, um, things tend to work out for you. And people who don't want to be nice, well, um, they don't. I mean, it's just a lot easier doing things that way. And then you don't feel bad, by the way. If you get a really good deal, you know, sometimes people feel bad that they, you know, they picked up, oh, I can't believe you got Toe Jam and Earl on, on Genesis for $5, you know. Uh, that's a expensive game, complete in box. Well, I mean, but if you're doing an honest deal, you can't feel bad when somebody gives you a good deal on stuff. I mean, everybody knows what's going on. Uh, up here, um, we've got a couple Mega Drive games, but also some American Sega Saturn games. I don't have a huge American Sega Saturn collection. I'd like to fix that, but uh, Saturn is gone for quite a bit. Uh, I do have Guardian Heroes. I got I got a good local deal on that. You'll, you'll hear this over and over. A lot of the more expensive stuff I find, not always... Um, I got local deals on, um, and, uh, you know, it, it, you, it means you're hitting the pavement a little bit, doing a little bit of that work, but, uh, you find some good stuff and you save a little bit of money and it can be fun. You know, I, to me, the, the hunt is part of the fun over here, uh, some Sega CD stuff last year. There was a place, uh, cartridges galore nearby. I happened to show up. And they were doing like buy two get one free on anything used in the store, and so I picked up a lot of expensive Saturn games. I got Dark Wizard there. Um, what else did I get? Um, um, I can't even remember. I got. I think I got Donkey Kong Country Two complete there. So we're we're moving on to the Super Nintendo games. So uh, a lot of these boxes for the Super Nintendo stuff I only got recently because I got that big deal from uh, the one dude who sold me. Uh, just a ton of empty boxes that I had the carts for already. So, again, uh, really good to piece things together. Um, uh, some other stuff. Most of these aren't too crazy in price. Um, uh, and uh, honestly, a lot of times I go for things I like. Like, for example, some people don't care about this game. Super Base is loaded. It's not that special. It's not a rare game. Um, it's, it's not expensive. But I like that game a lot. It's fun. <laughs> I have some great nostalgia for it. And Again, this is why I collect. It's not necessarily about, you know, money. Um, Castlevania 4, that was one of the games that was also buy two, get one free. I mean, again, if you can get great deals and you can uh, combine it, sometimes it's worth spending a little bit more if you can. Uh, but you got to you gotta be patient so you have the money to get those deals. Uh, complete in box N64. I have a pretty decent complete in box N64 collection. Um, and it's been growing and I, I try to work out... Um, Work out ways to get that. One cool find I had, I want to say it was last year. Um, like this Jet Force Gemini, the it was in a like some game store was like the box was a dollar, just the box by itself. And I was like, okay, I'll complete it. So really worth being patient on that, a lot of that stuff. 
I, I my understanding is the Kobe Bryant game is getting a little bit more expensive now, but I haven't really looked into it. Um, what else? I mean, Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, a lot of the Mario games. Uh, I've got complete the Banjo games. I've got complete. So that's pretty cool. N64 is a fun system to collect for, and I really like the boxes and the box art for them. So that's something I'd like to work on. I have a lot of N64 games, as you'll see in a minute, but um, I don't have quite as many boxes, and this is kind of where a lot of my collecting is going. Up here, some cool stuff. It's kind of hard to see with the video. This is like a shadow box kind of Mario Brothers thing. So it's got a 3D effect. I like that a lot. Some more Amiibos up here. This was the... I put this up here. This was a centerpiece at my friend Justin and Nicole's wedding. So I definitely was like, I'm taking that centerpiece. And uh, now it lives in my game room. <laughs> um, uh, Famicom stuff. That's a Final Fantasy II complete box. I got that as a part of the deal. A lot of my Famicom and Super Famicom stuff. I got uh, I got like this random eBay deal. Um, where is it? Is it right here? Yeah, so I saw this listing on eBay and it was it said Nintendo games like it had absolutely no description just a bunch of cards and pictures and I recognize this one this is uh, uh, Castlevania 3 the Japanese version which is uh, a better version of the game a lot more expensive uh, better sound things like that so I recognize this I recognize the Final Fantasy 2 there are some other games in it in that lot like on Super Famicom it, uh, I think Mega Man 7 Mega Man X2 was in that lot for Super Famicom and I think I got for like 30 bucks. So there are deals to be had online. You know, you can find stuff online um, if you're patient, but you got to be very picky. Um, some other things here, a couple complete in box Super Famicom games. I got, this is Seiken Dead Setsu 3, so Secret, uh, or now it's, tri I guess you could call it Trials of Mana um, that they just remade. Uh, the box is in really nice shape. I picked that up, believe it or not, at a record store at, that no longer exists in Ellicott City, Maryland. Um, if you're from around here, or maybe you paid attention to the national news, it got really famous because that city uh, flooded twice. Um, but the record store was super cool. I really miss it. The guy was super nice to me. Uh, I made a couple sort of for my loose games here. You can see some Sega CD games and Dreamcast stuff. You know, I made aftermarket cases since I don't have the original games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I sort of used a laser printer and printed that case for it because I wanted, I wanted to have it on the shelf. What is this? Uh, just a random game. Um, aside from that, these are just NES loose games. Most of them are common. I mean, most NES games do not go for all that much. There's some exceptions. I have a few of the expensive games uh, for the system. Uh, Bomberman 2. Uh, this is a hard-to-find game. Pretty expensive. Um, Battletoads Double Dragon is a little bit harder to find. Um, I could go through this all day. Uh, Super Game Boy Complete Box found that at a comic book store around here. I uh, love Super Game Boy. I think it's a really cool thing to have. Uh, Death Race is neat. Um, I'm not going to go through them all. I don't have Panic Restaurant. I don't have Little Samson. Um, you know, I tend to top cap out on NES at things. Your Spire and Ice with the manual. So that's a pretty expensive game. You know, some of these might go for... Look, I haven't even looked it up, but... Some of them might go in the 100, 200 range, um, but honestly, that's again, that's not why I do it, so I don't really pay attention to it too much on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, anything else here worth showing off? Um, a lot of the usual suspects, I have all the Mega Man games on NES, um, a lot of the NES games. I mean, NES is really how I got into video game collecting. Uh, Mighty Final Fights right there, that's a pretty uh, hard-to-find game. Uh, a lot of the NES games I got... Um, as a kid, teenager, um, I used to go game hunting at a little flea market. Uh, this is the late 90s, and at the time, nobody cared about NES. And you could walk into this place and pay 25 cents for Mega Man 1 or DuckTales 2 or something like that. And nobody cared. I mean, nobody really, it wasn't a thing that anybody did. And I built a pretty big collection that way as a kid. And um, that's one way you get to a collection this big is to, to get the stuff that Maybe you care about, but nobody necessarily really is all that interested in right now. And I would cl classify like the Nintendo Wii, maybe the Xbox 360 in this category. You know, a lot of people are getting rid of that stuff. They just don't uh, see the value in it anymore or they're, they've moved on. They see the new shiny thing. And if you're collecting now or just getting into it and you want to build a collection... Uh, and you can go to a yard sale and pay a dollar a piece for Wii games or a dollar a piece for Xbox 360 games... 
Uh, I would do it. I mean, I do it now because um, you'll find, first of all, you'll find some stuff that's worth a lot more than that. Uh, second of all, uh, you don't know what's going to happen over time or who might need that stuff that you can trade. You know, um, I picked up, you know, I'm not, I don't have a Vectrex. I found some Vectrex game, I tr games uh, at a yard sale. I traded them with the guy locally for some Dreamcast stuff I wanted. So keep an open mind and try and find stuff on the cheap that you think is either interesting to you or you could uh, trade. Uh, here's a fantastic N64. This is the only one I got, a green one. Uh, I'd like to get more of them, but I just don't find them all that often. Uh, so if you see them and you think uh, I'd be interested, hit me up. That goes for anything, really. If you think there's anything I'm interested in, always hit me up. I uh, love to trade. I have a whole bunch of doubles and an eBay store where I sell my doubles and I trade them locally and things like that. So uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to send me a comment or contact me on Instagram. I'll put the, the links in the description. And uh, please, you know, if there's anything at all you want to trade, um, by all means, I'm happy to talk with you. Anyway, here's some loose N64 games. Um, I really need to put a, a thing on, on, on this one. That's Castlevania Legacy of Darkness without the label. I bought these uh, stickers on eBay. They're really cheap. I think it's like $10 for the entire library. And uh, N64 games don't display really all that well. So uh, I bought these stickers, and you just put them on the ends, and now when you look at them on the shelf, you know what games you have. <laughs> Imagine that. Unfortunately, this link uh, broke off its pedestal. It broke my heart, but I kept it anyway. Um, really cool stuff. I like these things. I'm getting, I mean, I probably have, you know, there aren't that many N64 games. I've got to have at least half the library on N64 between loose and complete. I have quite a few. Um, some expensive games. I don't have Clay Fire 63 and a third, Sculptor's Cut. I'm just not spending the money on it. Um, I, I just don't want to do it. If I found it cheap, of course I'd pick it up. Or if someone wanted to trade it, I'd get it, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Uh, here's some more loose SNES stuff. I've got some good, uh, loose, uh, SNES games. Uh, Biker Mice from Mars here. Uh, my friend Matt, I don't know if he's going to watch this. He gave this to me. Uh, he check out his uh, game, uh, game bar in Japan, a uh, space station Osaka. You can hit him up on um, on I think it's TripAdvisor is where a lot of people see him. You can just look up space station Os uh, 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 Osaka on YouTube and probably see some of the videos he was featured on um, uh, Super Bunny Hop among other places in Kotaku. I think Kotaku as well because of some of the controversies with game bars over there. Anyway, he's a buddy of mine. I went to college with him, and he gave me some cool stuff for free. And he was a super good guy when he came back to do that, and I really appreciate it. Um, a lot of cool games here. Final Fight 3 is a pretty hard to find one, I think. I forget how I got that. Um, Lufia, that's a hard one. I didn't even know I had it. Ogre Battle, I got that locally. Literally a guy within walking distance from my house at Ogre Battle, uh, <laughs> and he was trading it or selling it with a bunch of other games, and I made an offer, and he saw in my offer up that I was selling like a spare Sega Genesis I had with a bunch of commons for like 50 bucks. And he's like, oh, well, I'll trade you the Super Nintendo, this Ogre Battle and all these Super Nintendo games for that Genesis. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. So again, keep an open mind. It's This is why it's good to have doubles around, and if you find a good deal on something that you can trade, um, later, uh, you can sometimes really get the things you want. Like, I don't think I would have gotten Ogre Battle if I didn't have that Genesis available for trade. So, anyway, Super Nintendo. We got some Famicom stuff, uh, Super Famicom stuff, you know, the Japanese SNES games down here. I don't really have a good way to organize them, so if you have any ideas about how to really display Super Famicom games, I'd appreciate it. You know, I can't really get label covers like I do for N64 things. There's my X2. I got some other neat Super Famicom games uh, down here. Um, over here, um, I got my little Tetris lamp. Uh, some of these are just like random toys. I, you know, some of the Happy Meal toys or things like that. I find I love. I mean, I don't, I'm not really a toy collector, but when I find like little Mario figurines and stuff, especially because you can usually find them at like yard sales for like 25 cents or something like that, I like to pick them up. You know, one another thing I like about game collecting, and and one thing I advise is if if you start getting a substantial collection. You know, find little stuff to make it, uh, give it some character. Like, I think it's really cool that I have these little toys up here. Uh, here's some GameCube games. Uh, I've got a lot of GameCube games, and um, I found good deals on on these things. Um, 
Another, uh, there's Fire Emblem right there. I'm not going to pull it out because there's Amiibos in front of it, but Fire Emblem, that's a pretty expensive one. Uh, hard to find. That was also a local deal. Uh, thank you, Jason. Um, I really appreciate that. I'm not, again, like, since it's a person I know, I'm not going to say how much I spent on it. Um, some other cool stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. The GameCube's really gotten a lot more expensive recently. All the Mario parties uh, there, they're all getting pricey. Um, I actually found Metroid Prime 2 just recently at a yard sale for two bucks. And I didn't realize how expensive that game got, but I knew for two bucks I wanted it. Uh, more stuff down here. Wario World, WarioWare Inc. Um, Melee, of course. You know, that game, Super Smash Bros. Melee goes for so much. And it's one of the most common games out there. But just goes to show that demand drives the market, not supply necessarily. Uh, Sonic Gems, that's a pretty hard to find one. Skies of Arcadia Legends. Uh, so, I, um, I, uh, there was a, a lady, she's a really nice lady, um, was selling some GameCube games that her kids had. I met her at McDonald's, it was 50 bucks for the GameCube and all the games. Now, Skies of Arcadia wasn't in that lot. Um, Skies, but uh, I helped her out with some computer stuff. I, I told her what I did for a living, and she had some needed some advice, so I gave her some advice. And then she contacted me one day and said, "Hey Ben, um, I have I found some more games. Can I just mail them to you? Uh, you can have them." And I was like, "Sure, you know, I really appreciate it." And Skies of Arcadia Legends was in it, among other things. I think uh, Kirby or something was in there too. Maybe I forget exactly what was in it, but it was it was crazy how good. Uh, this stuff was, and she, it was free, and she didn't want anything for it, and, but the reason she did it was, I was, you know, I was nice to her, and friendly with her, and she wanted me to have it, so, uh, again, another reason why it's always good to be nice, and friendly, and open, um, more Amiibos, and things like that, too, again, this is a kind of a neat shelf for Amiibos, I think, because you can put them right in front of the games, uh, down here, uh, PlayStation 1 long box things. I've been getting a lot more PlayStation 1 long box games. I love collecting them. I picked up Doom last year. Again, another local deal around here, uh, yard sale. I think I paid five bucks for it or something. NBA Jam T. I love NBA Jam. Uh, Riding Project. I actually had two copies of that. I couldn't believe that. Somebody sold me Street Fighter Alpha. Uh, on eBay for five dollars like I don't know if it works. I see some marks on the disc and I was like, okay I'll take it anyway, and it works perfectly so <clears throat> Excuse me um, Up here uh, PS1 um, This is the little PS1 and I got the LCD monitor uh, Another flea market. I went to a flea market. It was a, this thing with a big stack of games 20 bucks I think is what I paid for it and boy, oh boy, I couldn't get the money out of my wallet fast enough. These things go for a lot of money. And the games were good, too. It was like Metal Gear, Final Fantasy, all sorts of stuff. And this thing is really, really neat. I, amazing how well uh, this system with this L LCD holds up uh, today. It's really a cool system. Sony was way ahead of its time on it. Of course, I don't know how well it did commercially. Um, PS1 games here. This is a shelf I found at a, a flea market. And I'm like, this is perfect for PS1. So... I picked it up. I have a lot of PS1 games, a lot of hard-to-find ones, a lot of RPGs. Uh, last year, another local guy, Aaron, uh, another really nice guy, really worked with me on price. It was a lot of money, but he sold me a ton of RPGs that I was missing. So I'll scroll through real quick. It's kind of hard for you to do this. I have Symphony of the Night. You know, I have a lot of the big games you would expect for PS1. Um, it's another great system to collect for, PS1, PS2, just because the libraries are so big, you're always finding something you need. Diablo, that's a hard one to find. Uh, more Final Fantasy stuff. Grandia, I love Grandia. Really, really great game. Um, we're not going to go through all this. Ogre Battle on PS1. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Lunar, Lunar 2. Those are my original games. I love Lunar. One of my favorite series of all time. Um, and those I bought when they came out on PS1. And... Um, I will never get rid of those. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I love the anime. Uh, the PS1 game is not as good as the Dreamcast version, but I have both, and uh, I will not get rid of either. <laughs> um, Resident Evil Director's Cut. This was a cool find just the other day. Uh, this is the two-disc version, so a lot more expensive. I need to get rid of that price tag. This probably goes for around 50 bucks. Um, I went and picked up a bunch of Wii games from Facebook Marketplace, and I got there, and the guy was like, um, 
yeah, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to put up some PlayStation 1 games, too. I need to get rid of them. And I'm like, well, I'll take a look at them. And I got the big stack of PS1 games for 25 bucks, and that was in it, so, uh, among other cool stuff. Uh, Silent Hill, Rival Schools, those are cool. Um, things like that. Down here, I'm going to skip the rest of the PS1 games in the interest of time. We've got some Saturn import games. I've been getting more of those. My sister went to Japan and picked me up some of those, as well as some Dreamcast stuff. Here's my regular Dreamcast games. A few expensive ones. JoJo's pretty expensive on Dreamcast these days. Um, Alpha 3. You know, nothing too, too crazy. I also have some loose disc stuff. This uh, this book right here. I keep uh, pretty much all of my loose disc games in here. Uh, GameCube and PS1. I'm not going to flip through them. But there's some expensive games that I have just loose. And over time, I tend to complete them. So... I, I take care of them, and then over time, I complete them. This is just a question bo block box that I decided to keep. It came with a bunch of trinkets, but I like the box. Uh, more Amiibos, Xbox, original Xbox games. Again, another system. Uh, most of the games are pretty cheap, but they're good, and they, a lot of them hold up, and some of them are even in HD. So I'd recommend uh, picking them up. I get them real cheap, even though some of them are worth a lot more. So that's Xbox. I'm not going to bend over all that much. So that is the main room, and I'll show you real quick before I end the video, my handheld room slash workshop. So this room I've done some work on recently. This is, let me back up a second. This is uh, multiple things. I keep my handheld games in here. Notice I have a CRT TV in here, a bunch of other systems hooked up. So I do testing and cleanups and stuff in here. If I have to fix something, I usually do it in this room. I take care of minor repairs, but I've fixed quite a few things uh, just with uh, a little guesswork. Uh, here, these are just like controller bins, so I keep all my various controllers for a lot of systems. Here's a bunch of N64 controllers. Here's more N64 and GameCube. You know, you get the idea. Um, here's some Genesis ones in the boxes that I, I still have that I found. So anyway, I keep these bins for spare controllers. Uh, always buy controllers. If you can find controllers at yard sales and flea markets, sometimes you'll pay a dollar or two. If they're original controllers, they look pretty decent. They don't look totally trashed. I say just get them because they're good to have. You don't know when you're going to need a controller. Here's the CRT setup. I'm not going to get too much into it, but basically all the older systems, I, you know, I have, you know, believe it or not, I guess this won't surprise you. I have uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, systems of and so I have some in my main room and then I have ones over here to test things I decided to move all of my handheld stuff into here So I could just keep my collection a little more organized. So here on this side. We have uh, some special edition uh, stuff and then uh, here's some uh, PSP uh, special editions to 3ds stuff these are all my PSP games. I really like collecting PSP. I need to get more PSP stuff. Uh, I have some good PSP games. I, I, I found some great deals on it, but I could find more. Uh, I picked up Persona for like five bucks. Persona 3 Portable I picked up at Second Trails for like 10 bucks. I couldn't believe it was there for that price. Um, yeah, so I got some good PSP stuff. It's a really great system. Uh, another great, another system I really like collecting for, DS and 3DS. Um, awesome system to collect for. Probably going to get more expensive because you can't really, it's not the same emulated. It's just a different experience. So uh, I've been picking up a lot of DS and 3DS games. Uh, 3DS, you're starting to see, you know, people are really into Switch. You're starting to see people part with those. So there are deals to be found with 3DS and DS. Uh, I have some pretty rare DS games. Um, uh, the Dragon Quest games, I think Dragon Quest V, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like a hundred something now. It's crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I picked all these DS games up real cheap. Uh, and it's still a great system to collect for. I love the art and the cases and things like that. And the games are very playable. Like Ghost Trick, for example. Uh, really great game. I'd really recommend Ghost Trick. Uh, 3DS stuff. Uh, 3DS I had been collecting as the system came out. So I'm almost... I mean, there's definitely more 3DS games I want. But... Um, the list is getting shorter, uh, that's for sure. DS, I'll probably be collecting for a lot longer. Here's some more aftermarket cases. I made some for Game Boy Advance. I took some DS games that were junk, and I, I gutted the cases, or I maybe had extra cases, and I used the Game Boy Advance slots and made some 
Game Boy Advance cases for some of the more the games I like best on here. Fire Emblem, Castlevania, um, more DS. Uh, here's Vita. I don't have a big PS Vita collection. Um, I'd like to get more. If you have PS Vita games you're looking to part with, hit me up. Uh, here's a Neo Geo. <laughs> that, I know a lot of people care about that. This is uh, a Neo Geo AES. It's modded. Um, believe it or not, it's my backup system if you want to, because I usually will use the consoleized MVS if I'm going to play Neo Geo games. Um, but this is my other Neo Geo. Yeah, I bought that in college, and I do not regret it uh, for a second. Another PS2, Sega Sports Dreamcast. You know, most of the systems in here are just to test. Um, uh, more handheld stuff. <laughs> I have so many PS1 and PS2 memory cards. I just, I, found, I started uh, organizing them and putting them together. I didn't realize how many memory cards I had. It's crazy. This is my main 3DS if I wanted to play stuff on it. Uh, Game Boy Advance systems I keep here. I've got, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I've got, you can probably see I have a Game Boy Micro right there, a number of SPs. This 3DS, or I'm sorry, this Game Boy Advance right here is modded with a backlight. So um, it's really the one I go to when I play because it's got the better form factor and the backlight. So that's really nice. A uh, bunch of DS's. I love collecting DS's. They, uh, all the different colors and things. I need to put it up here. I've, I just found a bronze one. Uh, DSi XL, so that's pretty cool. Uh, PSP's uh, right here. I have a few of those. Uh, in this, there's a 2DS XL right there and a Vita. Um, some Game Boys. I don't actually have a Game Boy Pocket or a Game Boy Light. I'd like to get that. So if you uh, have those and you want to get rid of them, hit me up. Here's a 2DS, just a regular 2DS. It has a little dust on it because I never use it and I don't like it, but I found it and so I got it. Here's a Genesis instruction manual, just random stuff. Uh, up here, um, let me turn it up a little bit. Here you have Sega Game Gear games. Uh, you can find them cheap. And so I suggest, uh, you know, this is another system that's good to collect for, especially if you have a way to play it on a television. Uh, and you can hit me up if you want to hear more about that. Over here, uh, Game Boy Advance. I have a lot of good Game Boy Advance games loose. I found these things at like, um, I want to say it was like Dollar General. They're like, um, I think they're for like pencils, basically, or pens, like for a little school organizer thing, but they fit the Game Boy games. So I think I paid a dollar each, and so that was pretty neat. And then this wooden thing here has my Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. This was, I, I found this box at like a thrift store, and I think it was for like a train set or something. I'm like, Game Boy games fit in this, so I got that. I have a lot of Game Boy games. Um, but I, that's another system I love to collect for, always looking for more. Um, something I'm getting close to completing is my Nintendo Power collection. Um, I grew up with a subscription to Nintendo Power, and I'm pretty close to having the complete run. And in fact, uh, I'm so close, I really should just finish it, because I actually have the more expensive Nintendo Powers for the most part. I don't have issue one. Oh, or the last issue, but I've got the Rogue Leader issue, which I think is the most expensive one with the Pokemon card in it. Um, I actually have a lot of extra, um, I have a lot of spare uh, Nintendo Powers too. So if you have Nintendo Powers you're looking to get rid of, you're looking, you have some uh, that you want to trade, uh, hit me up. I might have some you need. They're really cool. I love Nintendo Power. It really is great to go back and uh, get a nostalgia trip off of. Strategy guides. Uh, I do collect strategy guides, especially the older ones. Um, you know, I don't like to pay a lot for them, but if I can find them, I, I get them. Um, down here, I think down here is where I keep it. Yeah, here's my... Here, I'm not going to go through it all, but this is where the spare Nintendo powers are. I probably have like 70 or 80 double duplicate Nintendo powers. Um, and uh, right here, uh, this is just workshop area. You can see some of the cleaning supplies that I have. Out rubbing alcohol, controllers I'm fixing, games I have to test, nothing too special. Um, Neo, uh, lastly, but certainly not least, some of my Neo Geo things right here. These are MVS cards, so I have a, this thing called a Phantom Converter, which lets me play the arcade carts on a home console. Some really good stuff here, King of Fighters 2001, Slug 2. Um, these are shock boxes. Uh, there's a guy who used to make them. Uh, and you can put your AES cards and use custom art. So <laughs> that was something I did way back, like 15 years ago. A few AES, uh, you know, home system games. Uh, you know, the Samurai Showdown, Baseball Stars 1 and 2. Nothing too crazy. Um, more uh, MVS games. Uh, you can see all the KOF games right there. Um, 
There's Magical Drop 3. Windjammer's Magical Drop 3 is the game that got me into the Neo Geo. It is one of my favorite games ever, and I still play it to this day. Um, it's a great game. Turf Masters, the best golf game ever made. I don't even like golf, but I love Neo Turf Masters. Yeah, so um, I guess that's pretty much it. Let me flip. So uh, that's the game collection. Uh, Maybe I'll do another video showing off, like I have modern games too, you know, Wii, Wii U, Xbox 360, Switch, PS4, you name it, like all that modern stuff. I keep downstairs uh, because I play them on my regular TV. Um, oh man, my hair's messed up. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to learn more, if you have questions, you want to know how I collect, you maybe you have stuff you want to trade. Uh, leave a message in the comments. If you have an idea for another video you want to see about my collecting, maybe you want to see like pickups videos or you want to see me in action. I was thinking about maybe sometimes when I pick up stuff, maybe doing shots for my car and say, here's the stuff I picked up and here's how much it costs. I could do that. I don't know if that's of interest to people. Um, uh, questions at all. Maybe you want to see an FAQ thing or talk about this, uh, specific subjects. Uh, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. So anyway, thanks for watching. This has been a little bit of a long video, but um, you guys wanted to see the game room, so here's what I've got. So anyway, take care and be safe. Bye-bye.